Hey, if you've been keeping up to date with our videos, you know that we created this a few days ago and I've done a few more videos where we can add a little bit of interaction to some of our containers. What if we put that all in place here? So now when you hover over this image, it zooms in. We've got a bit of text that grows. Obviously, we've got the call to action button. When we go down to this box over here, watch this plus sign moved and we have a background color change and more info. And it doesn't matter where I click, that will remain until I hit the X and it goes back again. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. You will have noticed that I have added a little bit of a background variation in the color there just to break it up a bit because it was a little bit too white in terms of the bento compartment. Let's go and add in a little bit of animation when you hover over some of these items. The first one is going to be really simple. And by the way, you don't have to imitate what I'm saying here. You might not agree with it, but I'm just adding in a little bit of variation. So this one over here, I'm going to make the text grow a little bit when you hover over it. So when you go over here, nothing actually happens. I'm going to add in a bit of CSS. Now you could do this with a call to action widget as well. But I'm just going to do it with a bit of CSS just to show you how easy and simple it is. We're going to go over to my container, go to the advanced tab, and I'm going to give this a class name. And for simplicity, I'm just going to call it ABC, mainly because when I pop the code in, which will be in the video description, you can go away and tinker with it and you'll know what to change. I'm then going to go over to my text, go over to the advanced tab, and I'm going to go to the class and I'm going to call it Shifty because that's what's going to shift. Again, you would modify this. Go back over to the container, go to the advanced tab, go down to custom CSS, and I am now going to drop in this code. And when you now hover over it, look at that. So look, it doesn't matter where I am on the page. When I hover over that container, the text grows like that. It is a little bit like a hover action you could do with a call to action. But if imagine you've got a text in here and you might have a button in here, you might have an icon in here, but you only wanted the text to grow. By adding in this little bit of CSS, what you're basically saying is when I hover over ABC, so ABC is the container, I want you to grow by 120%. So 100% basically it wouldn't grow. If it grows by 20%, which is why it's 1.2, it grows. And the other bit is the duration speed. So I've set this to be 0.4. If you wanted it to be quicker, you would go for, well, you wouldn't have that in there. Well, you might have it as 0, 0 0.1, or if you wanted to delay it, let's just go and set that to be 1.4. So now when you hover over it, can you see it's very gradual. And what I like is when you move your finger or your mouse away from the container, it gradually grows back as well. You don't get that snap jerky grow and then boom, goes back again. So that's really nice. Let's pop that back to 0.4. Now let's go and do one for the image over here. Rather than have the image, which I am now going to get rid of, I'm going to go and use the call to action, which I've already mentioned, but I just want to show you how you could use it. And it's so versatile just for images. Let's go and drop that in. Now we get an image and we get a text box and a button. I don't want none of those. So I'm going to switch it to be a cover, right? Pretty simple and easy. Then I'm going to go to my content and I'm going to get rid of everything. But what you do need to do for the title, even though there will be no text in there, just hit a space. Because if you don't, everything just shrinks down. Let's get rid of the description and let's get rid of the button as well. Now I'm going to go and pick my image. And it's pretty obvious already that when I hover over the call to action, the image now grows. Now we are going to modify this and also get rid of the fact that we get this like bit of a gradient. But let's address the first problem. Can you see the image? It's completely slicing off the head. It's almost like it's gone for a center center. I need it to be top center. Now, one of the drawbacks to the call to action widget is that, yes, you can add in your image and you could have gone and added it in here as well. But when you get to your style tab, nowhere on here do you actually have the facility to now go for contain, cover, top center, left center and all of that. But it's easy to do. All you got to do is click on the call to action widget, go to the advanced tab and add in a bit of CSS. And again, I will be adding this into the video description. So I've added in Elemental CTA, that is a double underscore, okay? If you just add in one, it doesn't work. You've got to add in a double underscore. The code will be in the video description, BG. This is for the call to action background image, background position, top center, and then exclamation mark important. I have found that you do need to pop this in just to make sure it works. If you wanted to have it as a left center or right center or bottom center, whatever you could do, that has now positioned it to be where it wants to be. There are a few things that aren't exactly right about it. Number one is the gradient and we need to get the rounded corners. 
Let's just go over to the style, go over to the hover effect and decide on what we're going to go for. I'm going to leave it as a zoom in. I'm going to go to the hover, go to the color, and I'm going to completely reduce that or make it transparent. So now when I hover, I don't get that gradient. Now let's just go over to the advanced tab, go to where we have border, and I'm going to set that to be 15. Now let's go and do something down here. We're going to go to the container and we're going to drop into here an icon. We're going to change the icon to be the plus sign. And I'm just going to go for the plus sign circle to keep it simple. We'll drop that in. We'll make it a bit smaller. Let's 30. That's better. I'm going to go to the advanced tab on go to position, make it be an absolute. I'm going to pop it on the right and pop it at the bottom. You can just see it above me. I'm going to move it up and away from the edge there. So I'm going to go with about 15. Then I'm going to go to where I have my CSS ID and I'm going to call this icon 333. I'm all, the only reason I'm calling it that is because I'm reusing some code that I would reveal to you yesterday. So it's easy for me just to drop it in. But you can obviously go and modify that. Then I'm going to go to the container that contains all of this. And remember, this is a sub child container. So the child container contains this brand leader image. And then we got this container. So I'm clicking on the container with the quote. Go to the advanced tab. And I'm now going to call this CONT one, two, three. Okay. Remember there's a certain logic and way I like to do things. And if you watched the video yesterday, you'll understand that cont three, 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 then I'm going to go and make a duplicate like this. And that duplicate, I'm going to go to the advanced tab. I'm just going to move it up so you can see me better. I'm going to call this one cont four, four, four. Okay. C O N T four, four, four. Now, before I go and modify the content, I'm going to go over to my child container. And I'm going to get rid of the row gap. This is quite important, OK, because you need to have zero gap there. And then I go to the first container here, the original one, and I'm going to say, give me 25 from the top like that. Then I go to the second container, the new one, and I'm going to say, give me 25 as well. This just kind of um, ensures that when it does overlap with what I do want it to do, it will still maintain the 25 gap we've got above there. Now let's go and change the contents of what we have here. The first thing I'm going to do, and you might be surprised by this, is get rid of the icon there. So we have an icon here. The text in here I'm now going to change. So I've modified the content just with the text editor. And you could put whatever you want in here. You can add in other images, videos, whatever you want. Let's just change the background color as well. OK, awesome. That's looking pretty good. Now into this child container number three, I'm going to drop in an HTML widget. Let's just pop it in over there. And it doesn't really matter where you pop it in because it will be invisible. Now, as soon as I do that, the new container disappears. Now, if you want to understand more about this code, go and watch yesterday's video where I clarify a bit more. But there's just a few quick things we need to modify on here. So at the moment, we have the original container, uh, which is currently visible. I'm going to click on the HTML and at the minute it says margin top minus 300 pixel. We want to change that to be minus 28 VH. Because if you click on the original one, you'll notice the height is 28. So when the new one appears, you want it actually to go over the original one. So that is why if that was, say, 200 pixel, you would go over to your HTML and you would say margin top minus 200. By the way, you don't have to do any of this, okay? I'm just showing you a funky way of how to do it. And then the final thing I'm gonna do is down here, I'm gonna say, does the, that icon change color? My code currently puts it to like a pinkish red color. Why don't we just leave it as black for simplicity? So I'm just gonna say, leave it as zero there. So when we're previewing this, we got the hover effect over there when, and it only touches that bit of text. If there was anything else in there, it would stay stationary unless you wanted it to be part of the CSS. We've got the image there, but now we've got this bit of a box. Obviously, we got the call to action button as well. But look, it doesn't matter where you click, right? And I am clicking, nothing's going to happen. But when you click on the icon, watch the icon, it rotates to become an X. OK, so it's the same icon. It went and revealed further items. And look, I could be anywhere. And that will remain on screen. That will remain. I'm not hovering now. I could scroll up and down. I could click over here. I could click this button if it was going to take me anywhere. And that remains. And it won't go back to what it was originally until I hit the X. So you could have moments on your page or your bento or however you're building your website just to add in a little bit of extra interaction or visual stimuli for the eye. Hey, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. I'd love to know your comments. Hate it, like it, don't care. Let me know. 
Speak to you soon. Oh, by the way, don't forget there's a video that's playing there as well. But you would have known that if you watched the original video. See you soon. Bye.